Well, hello, friends. I want to thank you for uh, taking time to be with us for our Wednesday prayer service right here at New Life Church. I'm so glad that we have the privilege and the opportunity and the powerful benefit of prayer. Jesus told His disciples that when you pray, go into your secret place and talk to your Father in secret. And He that hears you in secret will reward you openly. In the same Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said that we should ask and we'll see, receive. Seek and we would find. Knock and the door would be open to us. What a great admonition to be people of prayer. So I want to look at a passage of Scripture for a few moments and us consider it together. And then I want us to take a moment and right in this broadcast, I want us to pray together. But before we do, let's look at an Old Testament passage found in 1 Kings chapter number 17. It's a passage about Elijah. And there's something very profound that we see take place in this passage that I believe will be an encouragement to you as we face the things that we're facing in our world today. So let's look together at 1 Kings chapter 17, starting in verse number 1. It says, Now Elijah, who was from Tishbe in Gilead, told King Ahab, As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. He says to King Ahab, there's about to be a time of famine and a time of drought unlike he's, they've seen. And it would last for several years. And he said it won't change until I give the word. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go to the east and hide by Kareth Brook near where it enters the Jordan River. Listen to what he says. He says, drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you. For I've commanded them to bring you food. So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside Kareth Brook east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening and he drank from the brook. But after a while the brook dried up, for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. I've instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath. And as he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God, I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a, a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal and then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you've said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. Listen to this. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers just as the Lord had promised through 
Elijah. Oh my, I'm so glad that today our confidence and our trust and the place where our hope resides is in the Lord. You see, just like with Elijah, whenever Elijah was hidden in that secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty, in that place of safety, it's a place of provision. And God will provide for us in that place. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know, friends, that God, first of all, is our source. God is our provision. God is our answer. And I want you to know, you can trust God. And you can put your confidence in Him. You see, just like for Elijah, God will use whatever means necessary to provide for you. He'll use unconventional means. He'll use avenues and methods that make no sense in the natural. Oh, they're not always the, uh, the traditional ways of receiving help from God. For Elijah, he gave him to drink from the brook and he sent birds to bring his sustenance. Ravens of all birds, a raven, a scavenger, not really a clean bird by any stretch of the imagination. But God said, Son, I'm going to take care of you. I'll have meals delivered to you right there in your uh, right there in that place where you're hidden in me. And that's exactly what God did. And then the brook dried up, but God's provision never dries up. See, He told him, now I want you to go to another place where I'm going to use another unlikely means, another unlikely method for taking care of you. He used a widow that had nothing but a meager little resource left in her house. And God multiplied the resource of that widow to not only take care of Elijah, but to also take care of that widow woman. What an amazing God. There's so many beautiful layers of biblical truth in this passage. But the thing that stands out to me that I want us just to remember today is that God is going to take care of us. God is going to provide for you. God is going to see that you have what you need. My God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's the Word of God. That's the promise of God. And you can count on it. Oh, what a wonderful and a blessed assurance we have in the Word of God. Here's what I want us to do. I want us to pause now. And I want us to pray together. First of all, I, I want us to pray for your areas of need. You know what you have need of. You know what's in front of you. You know the responsibilities you're facing. And I want you to join me and let's take them to the Lord right now. Come on, let's do that. Right there at home, let's pray together. Let's just ask God. God, we come before You in the name of Jesus. So thankful that we can come boldly before the throne of grace to find help in the time of need. So we come before You, God, asking You, Lord, that You might supply all our need according to Your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God, we're being faithful to You. God, we're giving our tithe and our offerings. We're not holding out on You, God, thinking that we've got to come up with a plan. No, we're staying faithful to You, Lord. And because our confidence is in You and our faith is in You, God, we believe and trust that You're going to meet the needs, Lord. You know our needs for sustenance and provision for food and for clothing. God, we ask You for that. We ask You, Lord, for 
provision, God, for our church family, Lord, as they take care of their monthly responsibilities. I pray, God, that in ways that boggle their mind, Lord, God, just like you sent a raven to Elijah, God, I ask you, provide supernaturally for your people. I'm praying for testimonies, God, that are going to come out of, Lord, the this season of difficulty. I, I'm believing you, God, for testimonies, Lord, that people are going to say, God sent ravens into my life. It might not literally be birds, but figuratively speaking, they're going to have supernatural provision, God. Send it into their lives. Let them know, God, that you are intervening in their behalf. Supply all their need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And now... I want us to pray together for our church family for health and protection. Father, we come before You together as a church family. And God, we ask You in the name of Jesus, Lord, to wrap a hedge of protection around our church family, around their physical bodies, God. I pray, Lord, according to Psalm 512, Your favor would surround them like a shield, Almighty God. When the enemy would come in like a flood, let the Spirit of the Lord lift up a standard against Him in the name of Jesus. God, I plead the blood right now. I plead the blood of Jesus. I place it on the doorpost of my home. On the doorpost, God, by prayer, Lord, of our church family the New Life family and friends. God, we place that precious atoning blood. Lord, I call upon You for the healing stripes of Jesus to release healing in any sick body. Lord, anybody that may be battling coronavirus, I ask You, Lord, to heal their bodies. Protect their lungs, God. Protect their, their airways in the name of Jesus. Protect their children, God. I pray a hedge around every child, every boy and girl, every teenager, every mom and dad. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we plead the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We stand on the promises of God. We declare no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing right now. In Jesus' name. And now, why don't we pray? Pray for those that are battling depression. Because this lockdown, and now through the end of April, that, that can be overwhelming to some. So I want us to pray. Father, right now, we come in agreement for those, Lord, that are struggling with depression. Lord, this being locked down and kept in their homes and this sense of everything being shut down around them. God, I thank You. I declare over our church family that You've not given them the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. God, I drive out fear in the name of Jesus. I drive out depression in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, You said in Your name, we'll drive out evil spirits. I drive out those spirits of depression and those overwhelming spirits that, that, that come and try to make Your people, Lord, feel overwhelmed, to feel despair. I lose life in the name of Jesus. I lose hope in the name of Jesus. I bind the enemy and I loose the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. God, have your way in our families, in our church families. We intercede in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. I thank you that that gloom and that despair, it's leaving homes right now in the name of Jesus. Depart in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, God. I want us to pray together for our nation. So join me and let's pray. Let's pray for our nation. Father, we lift up our president and our vice president and all of those that are in leadership in our nation. God, we stand together as the church. 
God, we don't stand on political platforms. We stand, God, on a platform of prayer, agreeing together that You will move in our nation. We are Your people, God, called by Your name. We humble ourselves and pray and we seek Your face. God, we turn from our wicked ways. We ask that You'll forgive our sins. Lord, that You will heal our land today in the name of Jesus. God, roll back this pandemic with a mighty outpouring of Your Holy Spirit and Your healing power. I pray for an unexplainable, Lord, supernatural end to this. And God, that the outcome will be, Lord, the, the church rising up and being an answer and a solution to the world. Father, we pray for this. And we believe You for an outcome of Your blessing and goodness in our nation. Thank You for the answer to all of these prayers today. We ask them all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, what a joy to have spent this time together. I pray that you have a wonderful week and uh, the Lord willing, this Sunday we look forward to, uh, to being back here on stage uh, with our service uh, for you on Sunday and uh, with some, uh, some of our live worship team and, and just want to be able to minister to you as a church family. I thank you uh, for your faithfulness. Thank you for staying faithful. Thank you for staying committed. My, my, my. This is not a time for bailing on the church. This is not a time for dropping out on following Jesus. This is not a time for pulling away the closer we get to Jesus coming. Oh, this is the time to get the closest you've ever been. And I know that's what you're doing. And I'm proud of you and I love you. And it's a joy to, to serve and to, to lead you as the lead pastor of New Life Church. Karen sends her love. Uh, we think of you all the time, pray for you often, and look forward to being together real soon. Hey, until we're together uh, in person, uh, just know we love you, praying for you, and pray may God's best be yours. And as I often say, my prayer is that you'll have nothing less than everything that God has for you. God bless you.